In this video, I want to talk about the concepts of simultaneous and separate requirements in GD&T. So what simultaneous requirements do is make it so that you don't need what's known as a clocking datum when you have multiple patterns of features. Let me show you what I mean. So imagine this is a pulley, right? We got four holes that are for weight reduction. We've got a hole in the middle for a shaft and a keyway. So one way to dimension this drawing is to make one of the flats of the pulley, datum A, make the shaft hole, datum B, and then make the keyway, datum C. Then the four holes are related to A, B, and C. What this does is lock all of the features into the orientation as shown on the drawing right here. So this keyway always has to be in line with either set of holes. Now all the holes are the same, so you know, you're gonna get the a symmetric part no matter what. Now, you don't have to have the datum C. What simultaneous requirements does is it says that if you have the same datums and the same pr datum precedents, so the same order, with the same material condition modifiers, then a single pattern is created out of multiple patterns. So what that means is that this means the same thing as the previous version with datum C because same datums, same order, same material conditions. It's A and then B at MMC. What simultaneous requirements does is says that even though there's no clocking datum, no you know, datum for orientation, we're considering the pattern of holes with this keyway locked in orientation. Now, of course, this isn't always what you want. With this part, you can make a good argument that it doesn't matter what orientation the keyway is in, right? The part would function just as well if the keyway was right here or right here or right here. Well, right here means the same thing as here, but I'm saying in between any of the two, any of the, any of the holes. Now, there is a way to separate the requirement for the orientation of the keyway from the holes. Now, the way we do that is by writing the abbreviation separate requirement under each feature control frame where it applies. Now, the ASME standard says write something such as this, S-E-P-R-E-Q-T. I would argue that you should probably just write the whole thing out to make it more readable, so spell out separate requirement, but this is the example that's in the ASME standard, so people should recognize it just as well. Now, what this does is separate the requirement, as you might imagine, of the keyway to the hole. So what you could end up with is a part that looks like this, right? Where the keyway is in between two of the holes, not lined up with two of the holes. Functionally, this accomplishes the same thing. And manufacturing wise, although you can never exactly know how something is gonna get manufactured unless it's being made in the same building where you're doing your designs, Normally, a part like this, you drill or bore all the holes, and then you need a separate process to do the keyway. So a half inch end mill isn't gonna do it for you. You need a brooch or a wire EDM, or maybe even a really small end mill could possibly do it. But if you're going to do that in two processes, it's an extra step for manufacturing to have to line up this keyway to the holes. If it doesn't matter where the keyway is, they have less setup time. In addition, inspection wise, it's easier if you wanted to use hard gauges, now you have two hard gauges, right? Since it's a separate requirement, you have one hard gauge to check the holes and then another hard gauge to check the keyway. If you have simultaneous requirements, it's implied that you have to have a single gauge to check all the features at once. So there's some you know, upside to using separate requirements. The downside is that you can't use it for every design, right? Some designs it does matter, the orientation. Some designs it doesn't. Now, another thing I wanna bring up is a little confusing in the, the ASME standard. You can have simultaneous requirements with datum references at regardless of feature size, okay? So say 
say this is just a b right that's okay you can at simultaneous requirements it implies that the key way is in a definite orientation to those four holes but if all of the datum references are at rfs i'm sorry rmb means a similar thing regardless of material boundary if they're all at regardless of material boundary you cannot invoke separate requirements okay you can only use the separate requirements if at least one of the datum references is called out at MMB. So it has the little MMC symbol in there. Why this is, not 100% sure, but those are the rules, okay? So simultaneous requirements can apply to datum references at RMB or MMB, but you can only use separate requirements if at least one of the datum references is at MMB. So that gives you the capability to use two separate gauges. Now, the next thing that could come up, what if the datum references are in a different order, right? You're going to have, let's say we do this, so A, B, and then B, A. It doesn't mean you have separate requirements, okay? You've got two different datum reference frames, right? The inspector has to do a different setup, but it's still implied that the key way is going to come out looking like the drawing, right? that doesn't mean there's separate requirements just because the datums are in a different order. Okay. So that's it for this video. Just a quick talk about simultaneous and separate requirements. If I didn't mention it, this can be used with profile as well, although I can't actually recall seeing a, a profile tolerance with a separate requirement, but it's available if you need it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below.